There's a secret formula to make any anime good. You just need to have great character development, high octane fights, and big old plot points. But Heavenly Delusion said to hell with that. They used seemingly real people that are driven by their desires, revenge, and past with societies that have their own rules, MOs, and mysteries behind them that all reside within a ruined nation with unknown disasters waiting around every corner all told in a story that drops breadcrumbs waiting for you the viewer to put the pieces together yourself making you actually think <laughs> and big old plot points this anime just has such a unique and intricate story it starts out following kiriko and maru a pair of teenagers who are scouring this desolate post-apocalypse japan that's brimming with gangs cults terrifying monsters and horny women just to search for people who might have all the answers to their past in a mysterious place simply known as heaven to carry out a mission giving someone who looks exactly like Maru medicine. While simultaneously, we're following a group of kids in a place that oddly resembles what you might think heaven would look like in an apocalypse, and one of them looks oddly similar to Maru. But that's not the only weird thing about this facility. Every kid that lives here has some kind of superpower that's being groomed for an unknown reason and monitored 24 seven with restricted access to the building. So you might be asking, what are these kids here for? What are they hiding and why? But forget about getting an answer. If this anime treats you like you're a five-year-old child that's asking why mommy and daddy are wrestling at night and then they just tell you, you'll understand when you're older. But I'm 10 episodes older and I don't understand. Masakazu Ishiguro has perfected the craft of leaving breadcrumbs for us to follow. He will subtly drop us hands throughout every episode that's never enough to truly confirm anything, but it's just enough to allow us to take this information and build our own thoughts and theories on what might happen next or what the answer to this gigantic mystery behind heavenly delusion is but you cannot blink or you're gonna miss it all this anime isn't gonna come right out and tell you anything about the mystery characters or the world instead it's gonna hide it all within subtle hints and one-liners that seem meaningless at the time or a single image that's just panned across or something blatantly obvious that the general brain dead shonen watcher just wouldn't pick up huh like how there's so many people with power and wi-fi in this world that are all coincidentally connected to heaven i mean it's truly impressive that i've watched 10 episodes of this anime and know nothing but i'm going to start getting into the details of the episode so if you don't want to see that then you might want to click off about now the authors created what every great mystery series strives to do with each episode you feel like you're learning so much but then you look back at it and realize you haven't made any progress at all they find remnants of the strange symbol that's their only clue to what heaven is, but they just don't know anything about it or where it's at. They see these baby monsters in heaven and hear of a woman become a monster and even find a strange core in a cremated child, so you would speculate that maniacs are humans, but you have no way of confirming that. In reality, we've only been going in circles, gaining clues to a few different things, but nothing that we were able to put together. Until recently, we finally started to get information that can compound, like the second occurrence of the symbol, or the sighting of this thing before the great disaster, and even confirmation that is from heaven. But a well-constructed mystery that has seemingly endless amounts of loose ends that are all connected together in some way isn't heavenly delusions only strong suit the world the societies the characters all just seem so real because every person has their own priorities in life desires personalities and they handle things like emergencies and death differently so when the world collapses and life as we know it changes all kinds of people and societies form there are some who just want to go back to how life used to be and live out their days ripping fat old doinkers and farming, while others take advantage of the lawlessness of the land and form gangs to control territory and resources, and ruthless women form a society to capture and enslave men to use them solely as breeding pigs. Wait, that doesn't sound too bad actually. Even outside of how different people react to the world changing, they even nail the actions and mentalities of different age groups and their emotions. Like if your loved one is slowly becoming a monster and you're trying desperately to save her for months and you fail and you have no one left in this world, you might want to end it all too. Or how kids will be kids and they'll go places they shouldn't, play games with each other and test their boundaries or be gay. But I truly think the best part of the world and characters in this anime is that they don't explain everything about them with boring dialogue. If they want to show that someone's being emotional, they'll give them corresponding actions to show it. If they want to explain an aspect of the world, they'll show people doing the actions to explain it. And Production IG saw the quality of the story they had in their hands. They put their all into making it as the best they could. They took this and turned it into this. Not only does the color and movement bring the manga panels to life in the anime, but with the help of the soundtrack, it creates a feeling that the manga 
but just can't provide. That eerie feeling of hunting down the man-eaters or the feeling of adventure you get as they explore the world. Heavenly Delusion is just such a unique anime in how this world wasn't created by a story, but it was forged by how the characters chose to live within it and accompanied by solid production, it just puts it leagues above your average anime. It truly has all the makings to become a candidate of anime of the year and quite frankly, if it doesn't, I blame Disney for attempting to make it the second coming of the promised Neverland and locking it up. May you rest in peace. But now, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go watch some shonen. Let's go! There's cubes! But if you don't think this could be anime of the year, then go down and follow me on the Gas TV app and send me your guys' recommendations on what you think could win anime of the year so far. All the links will be in my bio. And if you enjoyed my review impressions of Heavenly Delusion, then make sure you like and subscribe. It really does help me out. Let me know what you thought about it down below in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.